on Foundation Station FS7, orbiting the yellow gas giant Zeni in the Kua system, a research team led by the stern Faisal Khan has been sent on a top secret mission by the highly successful chief explorator Jeruma Had Pelleter. Two cycles ago, in Coriolis Cycle 58, Jeruma and her team on the science vessel Gion 5 based in the distant system of Ereku, made an extraordinary discovery. Their sensors showed that something had awoken on the planet of Izar, famous for the mysterious artifact called the Web of Izar. The web is a hexagonal pattern of beams of unknown origin, forming a cage of light bending darkness around the planet. When this sensory data was compared to the weather patterns of Zeni, where the team is currently based, a clear correlation of energy spikes was found between the completely separate planets. Jeruma saw this mysterious synchronization between the planets as an indication that there might be a way of opening portals for traveling between them. Now, Faisal is eager to prove to Jeruma that she and her team are up to the task. The research part of the station, where the small team is working around the clock, has since been quarantined off from the rest of the station. Besides Faisal, who oversees the project, there is Harish, the hard-working archaeologist, who has seen artifacts no one should see, and Yorg, the rather spiritual analyst of the group, hailing from the nomad fleets. Finally, there is Alam Dania the technician who prefers the company of machines to those of other humans, and Leila Hatami, the ex-Legion fighter pilot, now officially flying the shuttles on the space station, but also seeing too that people on the station get what they want, and not just what they need. Welcome to Coriolis. You have for quite a few segments now, together with your colleagues, been installing these anti-gravity platforms and sensory arrays within the atmosphere of Zini, the gas giant. And since, Alam, you're a technician, yes. you've actually been on a few install runs together with our pilot. What's it like down there? Harsh. Pretty darn harsh. Mm. The gravity is about 2.5 normal, so it's not like over ambitious in that regard. But there is always pretty bad weather down in the atmosphere. Mm. You can't see much. You have to rely on the sensors of the ship. And I think, Alan, do you have data, Jim? I do indeed. You do? Interesting. Because then it probably means that when you fly the shuttle down in, into the atmosphere, you often need a sensor operator, and that is probably Alam's job in this case. Yes, well, you know, it's why I'm here, I assume, anyway. Do you sort of navigate for me? Yeah, exactly, to help you out, to detect and, and, and all that. It is also, since you're the technician, you're actually the one uh, rerouting energy to different systems on the ship. Hmm. So, uh, so you take care of the reactor as well. So, it's currently the eighth day of in the segment of the Traveler. You all wake up this morning knowing that in a day you will activate the experiment. And this is just the kind of superstitious part of it. Like if you activate it on the ninth day, that means there are nine icons and you then, uh, you know, uh, do not anger the icons. Mm -hmm. So you want the blessing of all of them. Yes, we do. It's very important. And do we all sort of believe in this? I mean, does it all mean something to all of us? Mm, maybe not that much to you. I don't know. Yeah. It's, you, you seem a little bit like you lost that part of your yeah, yeah. belief system a while ago, maybe. You're not that bothered with it, I guess. In no, same. but why take risks? Yeah, and I mean, you do fly into pretty shitty weather yeah. now and then. So there's probably at least one lucky charm somewhere you know, at least one yeah. favorite icon that you think is a nice one that you maybe silently, when no one mm. else is looking, etc., yeah. have a little short prayer to. So, so essentially, this day you have a checklist mm. of things. Like mm. you're gonna prepare for the big, big day tomorrow. Yeah. And um, everyone is 
anxious, but you know there is some calm. In, you know you have you have a lot of time. So um, I think Jorug he is probably the one that's up first. When, uh, when uh, Alam, when you kind of wake up mm. slowly, he's he's really quickly there. You know with a cup of your favorite drink and, uh, and uh, you know your hot kind of cocoa coffee kind of mix that you that you like. Yes. No. I'm, I I I I like Jorug. He, he, he's understanding. He, he he doesn't talk all the time, and he just knows to just sometimes just be 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 present. I, I appreciate that because I think sometimes I just want to work, and he's nice. He's kind of you know coming up to you, handing you your your kind of mug, hmm. uh, putting a, a hand, a kind of sturdy but comforting hand on your shoulder, looks into your eyes a little bit, and then like. And he sighs, you know, in a, in, a, in a positive kind of. I know we will. It's gonna. It's all gonna be fine. You know, calming kind of way. Yeah, I mean, I'm always a little flinchy because I'm not really used to people just touching me all the time. But um, I, you know, I try and put a good face on and go, yes, th- th- thanks for the, thank you for the the, the, the drink, thank you. And, mm. Of course, of course. Uh, you, do you want anything to eat? I have uh, prepared. Oh, uh, no, that's that's fine. I, I should probably, uh, what's the time actually? I should probably start getting work. Uh, I want to get a good start on it. Oh, we have plenty of time. We have the entire day. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 at least you, you, you can sit down and, and uh, chat with the rest of us. I, I, I heard uh, Faisal is uh, almost up and uh, I mean, Harish is not far behind. I uh, bite my lip. And I just feel a bit like I just don't want to talk to any of these people right now. And I just go like, no, honestly, it's fine. Um, I, I really would like a start, actually. I mean, the, those calibrations, they take time. And I, I need to double check them. I know you say I don't have to, but you do. You need to double check them each time. They're important, Yarug. He smiles a little bit knowingly. I mean, he's been spending some time around you for the past few segments. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, he understands. He nods a little bit. He moves away, uh, you know, give you your space moves off to the table where pretty outstanding spread of different dishes are already kind of up. You know, there's bowls of, 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 of olives and, and, and there's these mushroom mixes and, and things like that, some salads and things that he has um, probably um, in some weird way gotten out of the hydroponic uh, lab that you have. Um, you know, it's it's marvelous. Usually, people only get this kind of gokki, uh, you know, mushroomy thing. But he managed to get a lot of kind of interesting stuff going. It's nice. So I take a moment to sort of adjust my uh, clothing and uh, say a little quick rote prayer to the deck hand. It's you know, it's just a very simple, basic thing. I don't yeah. really think about it when I say it, but you just do it. In the morning. Yeah. What you, do. Yeah. you know, to get good luck for the day yeah. and kind of yeah, yes. feel you feel warm and comforted, uh, kind of inside when you do this. You know that the uh, deckhand is kind of watching over you. So far, nothing bad has happened, and that must mean that you know, you're favored uh, in some some way at least. Um, so, Leila, how is your morning? Um, my morning is uh, well. It's not. It's just getting straight up, I think. It's not like I've got that much left to do because I've made all the preparations already. I feel quite calm about today. Yeah. Yeah, shouldn't be much of a problem. I start to do some physical exercise, do a few push-ups, stuff like that. I, uh, uh, yeah, just get warmed up. I go get to the shower and uh, then I uh, make my way to get something to eat. So you sit down as well a little bit with uh, Faisal and, uh, and Harish. I think um, Faisal is already at the breakfast table. He's, uh, you know, a little bit disgruntled. Uh, uh, she's watching her tabula. She's going through the checklist for for the day. Um, he looks up a little bit and then, uh, you know. Okay, so. Everyone should get ready. You know, you have your lists. We, 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 we've gone through this for, for the past few days. You know what to do. Like, just don't mess anything up. Jeroma arrives tomorrow morning and I want everything to be according to plan. You know, 
everything should be checked. We should be ready to go. And then we can finally break this piece of isolation, can't we? Oh, yes. Yeah, she looks at you. I so long for just some R&R &R yeah. of this, this, this station. Tell me about it. It's grown a bit dull, really. I mean, I know we've got lots of things to do, and the, the, the place uh, is a challenge. I mean, it's a good challenge, and you, everyone's been doing a good job, but yeah, it's getting really, you know, sitting on my hands here. I just sort of listen. Um, I feel a bit mixed because I don't quite like the particular place we are isolated in, but otherwise, it's, it's not that bad, really. I mean, you've been to the Coriolis station uh, a couple of, you know, almost a cycle ago, maybe. And I mean, you, you got terrified by all the people there. Mm. So, um, I did. I mean, yes, I don't, I, if anything, this is much better than that. It's only the low planet itself unsettles me a little. I didn't really come out here to see desolate, stormy places. Well, ah, would be nicer yeah. things. Mm. Yeah. I grab something to eat and I look at Alarm. So what about you? Are you not feeling it when I get out of here? Hmm? You're being quiet as usual? No, um... Well, yes. I'm sure it'd be nice to do something else. Um, away from here anyway. It's a bit, 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 bit quiet, but... You're least... lying. You're lying again. What, 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 what do you mean I'm lying? You want to stay here forever, won't you? I don't want to stay here forever. I chew my lip. I'm a bit like, oh, she always jibes me. Um, yeah. I don't really know how to respond most of the time. Um, I actually look to Yorug for a moment, sort of, he normally supports me at times like this. <laughs> yeah, he, he just sighs a little bit and then he smiles and, and he kind of uh, moves over a bowl to, towards Leila. It's like, you should really, you know, you should really take, taste the, the dates. It's, they're quite fresh and, and lovely. I'll take a few and I, I put them, uh, I take one and put it in my pocket and I start eating on the other one. What about you? What are you going to do after this? You gonna go back to, uh, well, you know, the traveling life? I mean, it's, you know, the, there's, there's still research to be done here. And we don't know the result of this. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I wouldn't mind uh, traveling the stars for a bit after this. It, it would be nice to, to, you know, see how the horizon has changed uh, during these, these segments. Have you been to the, to the far reaches? Of the, of the horizon, later? No, I'll travel my fair bit, yeah. Uh, which one were you thinking of? I mean... Oh, I think... I think it would be lovely to go and visit Inu or, or you know, go, go to the far reaches, to the, to the wide belts uh, off of the uh, quadrant of the pillar. I mean, really, if you haven't been there, you, sh you should go. Um, those systems are, are, are beautiful. Sounds all right. Is there a lot of uh, work to do there? There is always work to do, but I mean, you would have to, I don't, I don't know, you, you, you would have to relinquish some of your military background, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we actually want to build something, not, not destroy it. Wow. It's not been that much destroying over here, has it, either? No, Things have been quite right calm. At, you know, driving and piloting. <laughs> yes, of course. Anything. I mean, she's an excellent pilot. <laughs> yes. Uh, we, we're all very happy that you're here, of course. Yeah, well, it is getting a bit dull, um, if I'm honest. I uh, stretch my hand and it shakes a bit and I rub it together. I like the feeling of uh, the implanted electrodes that I have under yeah, my skin. Yeah, you almost, you know, you can charge them up a little bit and you can feel them tingle a bit when you do that. Mm. So it kind of calms you a bit, maybe. Yeah. Harish uh, has been silent for this whole conversation and she kind of, she just looks around and, and uh, like, I think we should should start working now. I mean, this this day won't last. We we really have to get going. And Faisal actually is a bit um, uh, looks up and kind of just for a moment kind of allows herself to look at Harish and, and, and there is a surprise in her her eyes there that for once they may agree on something. So she stands up. She drinks the last of her cup uh, of coffee and she you know, leans out over the table and, and address all of you. Yep, uh, pack this up now. I think we just, we should get going. Let's, let's, let's do the schedule. Let's 
Let's get this done, people. I nod easily and pretty much I'm already up, ready to go to where I'm needed. I make a clicking noise with my mouth and I grab another one of the dates. You're right, Jorog. These are great. Yeah, see, I told you. Yes. And he, when he stands up, he hands you the bowl and kind of just, you know, in a way that it's like, yeah, bring it with you, essentially. And then he kind of packs up the rest of the stuff and prepares to go to the lab. I take the whole bowl with me uh, for, for the ship. Yep. When you uh, stand up and are about to walk out, you get a personal uh, message going out to you from the station chief. And there is an order there to go to the airlock and to bring the shuttle to a certain location. So you are called off from the rest and the rest of you essentially start up your tasks of going through the procedures for the experiment. So. Right, O Control, I'm on my way. And as Leila, as you lead, the rest of you starts looking through the, the gear and you run simulations of the pattern and, and how to um, change that and kind of what's needed. So you're running a bunch of these simulations. It looks pretty good. Um, you think like if you just get about 10 or so hours of actually doing all the, all the checks, uh, making sure that the sensor arrays and all of that works the way it should, I mean, you're actually starting to feel pretty calm about the next day. Yes, no, I'm better now. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm just focusing on my work. Obviously, most of my stuff is just the maintenance of everything rather than the meaning of it, but you know, there's a nice feeling you get just doing something well and simple, and I'm good. But today, I'm feeling good now. Yeah. Um, an hour or so into your, your routine, a message goes out about um, an incoming shuttle, and um, Everyone is ordered to go to the main corridor. So even Faisal looks a little bit like, what the hell is this? You know, what in the name of the icons is happening here? As uh, she moves up and she's like noticeably irritated about uh, what's going on and, and almost shouts, barks a little bit at the rest of you. you know, okay, fine. Everyone, get out into the corridor. Uh, uh, let's let's not get distracted here, okay? All right, boss. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, gosh, I just bite my lips and I'm a bit annoyed myself. But, you know, I never show that to anyone. And I uh, follow everyone out. Yeah, you're lining up, and there's actually a group of um, five additional legionnaires that have come through the the, the bulkhead, the main the main doorway and they move up to the airlock. Together with the other three guards, they uh, become two rows of four, standing vigil as the airlock starts to open. So Leila, you have been called away and uh, with your shuttle, you have picked up a person, like one of the local moons. You dock towards the docking station, um, you move out beforehand, you enter the corridor through one of the kind of side doors, and you see your team members kind of lined up, uh, as well as these legionnaires. The VIP in question that you have been transporting so urgently steps out through the airlock. So with a hiss, you all see Jeroma had Pelleter. She walks down the corridor flanked by the legionnaires, dressed in gold and hot red. She has a pretty anxious research assistant, dressed in white, coming right behind her. And her stern face is covered with a kind of classic white paint of Sinithian nobility. She moves up to Faisal and you know, nods, and they share a very brief conversation together. Faisal, you can kind of see that she's first she's annoyed at first, and then when, when Jeroma arrives, she, she <clears throat> kind of uh, shapes up a lot. 
she, she's probably a bit anxious and, and, and almost you can almost see fear in her posture. But once they've spoken for a little bit, she seems to calm down a little bit. She steps to the side and um, Jeroma looks at the rest of you. So everyone, it's time. No more delays. We go active now. I don't want any excuses, no more checks, no more controls, just get this thing working. I want this launched in one hour. I don't say anything, but I visibly just sort of, sort of twitch a little and bite you my You hear head. some of the others also going like, but, but, Yorug is kind of biting his lip a little bit and is like, but, um, and Harish is actually, he can't quite contain herself in that, like, but that's, that's impossible. And then she also kind of goes silent. Yeah, I start talking to myself, like, did I check that one? I think I'll make that one. Do you think? No, it's, it's going to be one more. And I take up one of the dates from my pocket and idly start chewing it. Yeah, I think I can take I'm that I'm thinking of every single thing that hasn't been checked at least three times. And if that wasn't checked three times, then surely like, the, that engine went not... And I'm just sort of inwardly miserable as all things. I think Jorog is actually r- raising a point there with your Roman is, you know, his... But, uh, we said that we would do it the ninth day. I mean, we have to make sure that this is blessed by the icons and that uh, that everything is in order. Oh, right. That superstitious stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to Yorug. He, he, he's, he's, he knows his stuff, you know, the icons and all that. Don't listen to our leader. Don't, don't listen to the people in charge, actually. It's, yeah. it's true, in a way. I can't believe you people. That's... Yaroma just looks at you and uh, looks at Yarog and it's like, no more excuses, no more blessings, preparations, all of that. You've been pre- preparing for this for, for segments, you know? It's, it, just get this thing going. I want to see this happening now. Yes, ma'am, I say, looking uh, a bit admirably at the uh, nicely traditionally painted Zenithian. She nods. And, and it, it kind of, yes, finally they listen. Good, you know. And uh, she moves away with um, four of the legionnaires and her research assistant, and they move through the main door into the rest of the station uh, to greet the, the station chief, st- station commander. So, Faisal standing there looking at you. You're left with a few guards, but that's about it. You all in the crew look at each other and you realize that you suddenly lost about 12 hours of prep work for this. One hour, that's really, really risky. And this is why me as a GM gets a darkness point. Oh, why? Just start muttering under my breath. Of course, you know, if everything goes completely wrong, who's wrong is gonna be? Oh, it's all, you told us it was ready, and I'm just not ready, and it's like, Ugh. So, Faisal just kind of straightens up. Okay, everyone, we just do the final procedure checks. You have your you have your schedules. Let's 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 do this. It could work. It could work. And you hear, for once, there is actually a little bit of a you know doubt in her in her voice. When she says that. As long as everyone else does what they're supposed to do, and no one touches anything incorrectly, I sort of look at Layla a little while I'm thinking this. Of course it's going to work. Jeruma's asked us to do it. She knows what she's doing, doesn't she? Yes, of course she does. Yes. Okay, everyone. Let's... Let's get going. I pick up a crumpled note from my pocket, like the procedures that I've gone over a million times by now, and I fold it up like... Yeah, 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 yeah. And I start moving. I go and try my best to start getting things ready. I really do find sometimes that these Zenithians just don't, just don't take time with anything. Yeah. Anything at all. Ugh. So, from this stressful morning that you are you're handed, essentially, you, um, you all start going through your routines uh, to get this thing working. Uh, there's hardware to check, and there is um, c- 
calibrations on the software that needs to be done. And I think some of these could fall upon our technician, for example. Mm. So there is some sensory arrays and things like that, and you, you should probably check those. Yes. I think it's time for a little technology role for you to start looking through the hardware. And essentially, the uh, idea is that if you do really well here, you will actually manage to get things ready for the, the great experiment to start. I feel rather confident at least in knowing what I'm doing, so I, you know, I, I, I just hopefully let things occur. One, six. Yes, that's a success. It's not great. It's a, you know, uh, things could be better. Calculations are not, you're not, you're not comfortable with it, but it's not at least broken or anything. It could mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. work if nothing special happens, if nothing kind of strenuous, weird, uh, yeah. It, well, everything, it could work. Everything is how it should be, and that's fine. It just yeah, I think um, Jorug, for example, he disappears into the lab, and he starts looking through the calculations with him being the analyst. He starts kind of uh, feeding the patterns and everything. Um, you know, looking through all of that. Faisal is going through her notes and making sure that you know all of the. Um, the startup procedure is gonna uh, run correctly, run simulations on those. And um, do you have uh, data gin, Leila? Yeah, I do too. So I think what we're gonna do is, since you're kind of the, you're normally running the, the shuttle, but you get to help out, I think you can do a role for Jorug where you are assisting. Oh, great. So. Because I basically got my stuff done already, so just exactly. helping him out a bit. Yeah. As I leave the place, I pass by a mirror and I said, "Shit, how does that look?" It would with our VIP coming and everything. And I touch the tattooed cross on my forehead and just go over my hair, and then I go over to Yorig and start assisting him with his stuff. Um, so he is checking all the patterns and, and the simulations for, or the software for the readouts that you're gonna get when the experiment starts. Um, you can roll for him and then you can add one green die for you. He has wits four and data gym three, so it's seven dice. One success. Yeah. So this is also, you know, not great. Everything should work as long as nothing bad happens. You're all starting to get everything in shape actually and it feels like this could work you know mm. um, as you you're spending some time with uh, Jorug in the whole kind of calibration thing you notice that Leila you notice that he is um, he's really anxious like he was calm this morning but, but now he's really really anxious and as he's going through the configurations you notice that he checks them like again and again and multiple times. It's almost like he is uh, stuck in, in in a loop, you know, at some point. So, you helping him is is the, is the thing that kind of pulls him out of it and allows him to kind of continue his work. But there is something there. He's not his usual um, calm self, and he's actually muttering a little bit to himself. And you can hear him kind of under his breath a little bit, going. Oh. This, this has to work. There is no other alternative. Are you right there, Wanderer? Yeah, yes, of course, Le uh, Leila. It's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Is yes. it the uh, nine icons thing? Uh, this, yes, but yeah, it's, it's not good. It's, it's... We were supposed to wait. But we still have the favor of Sam, don't we? Uh, I hope, I mean, I will pray for us and I will, I will make sure that the icons listen listen to us and see us in, in, in good favor of course but well, then you're sure it's gonna work if we all pray a little bit we're almost nine people yes yeah, let's do it. yes we should all pray yeah. excellent uh, suggestion could you could you bring that up with the faisal maybe i mean we should all go and and, and i mean i know we don't have a, a a chapel in this in this part of the station but uh we should all 
pray together. Oh yes, I will definitely go straight to visit Faisal straight away after I helped you, and I'll and I'll definitely bring that up with her that we're all going to go pray to make sure this is actually going to work. Will you will you join me first? You know, you know, a quick prayer to the traveler. He says, and he kind of looks at you with with some hope, and and you can almost see some happy tears in his eyes. Um, I was kind of joking about there a bit first, but seeing this, I I sort of get a bit anxious myself. You know, I get I get slightly it kind of rubs off on me the nervousness and well since the traveler is my favorite icon anyway so yeah sure yeah i'll, I'll join you Yorick. yeah so he uh when once you've completed your check he he's like let's let's go to the to the common room and and, and pray together um, yes thank you and um, he walks off towards the your, your crew quarters and kind of beckons you to to follow him there yeah, well, I uh, take one last look at things, and yeah, well, he got that sorted, didn't he? So you end up t- together with Jorug in the yeah, well, essentially the breakfast area the, at the table, and uh, I mean, you'd only delayed for a few seconds, but the moment you step into the crew quarters, there is always you know already kind of incense and you know his burning candles and stuff. It's already kind of set up, and he's had a little this little ornament mat kind of thing, you know, this little carpet thing that he's kind of put on the table, and he's placed little idols, you know, in, in some kind of wooden material that's like been carved. So there's like already nine of these little statues uh, placed on the little mat, and he's just delighted to see you come into the room. And uh, is anyone else there now? Not yet, no. Right, yeah. Well, let's get started then. Let's uh, do a prayer, shall yes, we? Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. And um, you two sit down and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is like probably a half an hour's work or something like that. You, you sit down and, and kind of go through the... You, I think you, you're, you're almost like opening your eyes a little bit and it's like, is it done? And he is like going into the next verse, and, and you know, he has his prayer beads, he's kind of going through them, and it's like, yeah, no, you're not gonna leave it uh, quite some time. Well, probably make, keep him from making, you know, less mistake and mistakes, exactly. I'm thinking. So. That's why. But this actually means that you pray to the, the traveler, it means that you get a bonus on um, uh, culture and on. Uh, uh, survival. If you decide to re-roll, you'll get plus two to that roll. So, uh, Alam, you are... You've done your, your hardware checks, right? Yes, I have. Twice. And as you kind of reach the end of that cycle, you're... Yeah, this this could actually work. This could actually work. And you're looking at the readouts from the kind of sensor arrays. There are mm-hmm. these four quadrants on 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 Cine's surface, and you have installations that are gathering information for all of these. And that's like that's the stuff. That's that's what you're gonna. Yes. Uh, that's what's gonna go online later. Exactly. And I've seen. You know, I've been down there and actually even seen them and worked on them, and I know they work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, they should be. You know, th- there shouldn't be a problem. All the simulations say that this should work. And then, when you think that, suddenly, you can see one of the sensor arrays, the readouts from the sensor arrays, just mm. shuts down. What? No. I immediately uh, start to try and pick up something of what just happened. Why is there a power cut or something? Seem to be some notification, kind of the last packet that was sent says something about uh, that the installation has been damaged. It, there is multiple readouts from from some systems that are broken down. I bite my lip hard as I think about this. Does that mean I'm going to physical damage? Are we actually going to have to, like, there's no way in this time frame to even, do we even have time to go down there and, and fix some physical damage? When you're really stressed out, when you, like, that stress starts to build up, suddenly it goes back online again. Uh, mm. I, I very quickly double check that it actually is back on. Seems to be, yeah. But you can roll a data gym uh, roll to just see kind of what's going on with the with the with the readout. You have, however, kind of a chill moving across your spine. The gut also kind of clenches a little bit. Uh, that happens. I see. Well, I I I, I check and. 
and that chill just makes me really nervous and I just for a moment just mutter a prayer to the the deckhand please please just please just be all fine please I I don't have time for this you pray that you okay so two successes that initial kind of dread that just you know pours over you and and you mutter this this prayer to the deckhand uh, you're really anxious about it and then you start looking into the subsystems and everything and you notice it's like no okay there, there there wasn't actually physical damage there was just you know that's that's an error message that's just the wrong error message and okay. and and it seems like there was just some atmospheric disturbance you know there is a lot of kind of storms shifting and, and the weather is quite bad at sea in general so it's like okay we're fine <laughs> you you're fine we're fine. We're fine, right? We're fine. We are fine. We're good. That's that's good. And I just silently thank the icons. And I, I already feel more nervous now about the whole not doing this on the right day. I wonder what Yorick is thinking. I'm sure he's not happy. He seems happier, though. Because now Yorick has spent about 30 minutes together with you in the, in the common area, uh, praying to the icons. And... Once that's done, he, I mean, he's also a realist, so he's, he, he understands that he can't sit here for four hours and, and, and kind of mass. Um, so he starts packing up things. You see the final bead kind of being moved on his uh, prayer uh, necklace, and then he uh, starts packing things up. And he just uh, looks at you with great um, joy and, and gratitude, and he like, smiles and nods. Doesn't say anything, just nods. <sighs> and then he starts rolling up his mat. I pick up a licorice stick from my pocket and I start chewing on it and I uh, nod back. Uh, I'm gonna see if uh, someone else needs some help now. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, uh, excellent. You should be ready to go soon. <laughs> I actually feel that this could work. How much time do you have left, really? I mean, you said, she said one hour. Yes, it should be any minute now. I, will, I, I think we should probably go to the lab uh, immediately. And you all actually get to the lab station. And Jerome arrives again with her research assistant. She walks up once again. She talks to Faisal. Faisal is stern and, 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 and nods and she looks out. She assures Jerome that, yes, we're all fine, we're ready to go, according to plan, we can just start this up. It's all good. What do you know? That's a change of planet. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, I literally say that. What's going to happen to it exactly, do we know? Jerome looks a little bit irritated and uh, she's like, well, everything goes according to plan and our theories are sound then we might be onto something completely new a way to travel between planets I yes this could be changing everything for us really everything okay Faisal activate it I just absently rub at my face a little, uh, scratching out a little scar under my eye, mm-hmm. which also covers me a little. I go up to the window and I look at the planet, I look at my reflection, I look at the planet again. Faisal steps up to the table, to like the main controls, and she looks at them for a little bit, she pauses and then she turns over towards you, or to, rather towards your own, actually. Okay, so everything is ready, but I think you should have the honor. And your own nods, and she walks up and enters the initialization code into the computer, and you all see within the lab how every tabula and screen and hologram and kind of readout lights up all around the room and at first there is there is nothing there's just these bright screens with no data everyone is silent kind of holding their breath I even stopped chewing yeah yeah 
exactly. There is even no hewing sound from Layla. And then, suddenly, one for each quadrant lights up, like one diagram for each quadrant lights up. So you start getting this, this, this curve, uh, this readout going. And you can all see that there is a second pattern in the background, which is essentially the one you're trying to hit. So you see the kind of spikes and the, the shifts going and you see the repeat pattern that you've all kind of been watching for, for the, the, you know, almost a cycle now. Um, you all know this, this pattern all too well. Uh, you can see that none of them kind of hits the right frequency or anything. They're, they're, they're off quite a lot um, uh, compared to the ISR pattern. But um, after a while, and it, it feels like a really long time for you, or nothing really changing, suddenly one of the quadrants starts to change. You see how the pattern is, is kind of being used. You actually see the readouts saying that the pattern is changing. It's being um, pulled closer to the original pattern. And um, everyone in the room, you feel that these segments of stress kind of just <sighs> released from your systems. You know, it's this tension is, is, is just falling out of you actually feel kind of warm and fuzzy and happy. Mm. Good inside. Mm. Yes, I actually relax a little. Everything's working as planned. It's good. This is good. Yaroma watches the screens. Hmm. Excellent. And she turns and leaves. Faisal and the rest, the rest of you. Okay. Yeah, we've we practiced this. You know, you know, you know the drill, you know, we're we run the shifts and uh, make sure that there's always someone watching the changes, watching the, the readouts. Let's run it as planned, everyone. And um, the first few hours you're all in the room, but then when the day kind of cl gets closer to, to, to the, you know, when it turns into evening, uh, you all split up and uh, there is this schedule of two at a time. Uh, being in the lab as the other ones get to sleep and eat and, and relax for a bit. You, Leila, you feel once all of this, you didn't quite know how much tension you had kind of in your body, but when you get to this point, you realize that you've been standing there kind of both hands shaking and kind of holding them together and and it's and you almost tapping your foot a little bit, you know, it's like you can, can feel the stress kind of going out into your body and, and, and you feel almost like a craving uh, in you. I wipe off a sort of drop of sweat that runs into my eye. Ah, it really stings. I feel it along with the shakes. And, uh, it's not like I can get something here, is it? No. I mean, yeah, if you would be wounded um, you could always go to the med lab I mean hmm. yeah. yeah yeah what do you have in empathy I have three two then the three here is you I mean you're since you're not good at the kind of social interaction part and, mm. you, know, you 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 made sure to look at everyone as the, and as well as the machines when this online and you notice that right before activation uh, Harish left the room and once the group kind of starts splitting up a little bit and going doing their duty kind of do, doing their different things um, after the activation you don't see where she went it's not until about 20 minutes or so later that you actually see her coming out of the common area. Hmm. I mean, her leaving a little early isn't too unusual, is it? I mean, her checks probably were some of the least important. Her field of study is more planet itself or... True, yes. 
Yes, this is what you tell yourself. Yes, it's good. She walks past you and she comes out of the common room. She is. Um, you notice that her eyes are a bit kind of watery, a bit red. Uh, she tries to just kind of uh, shape up a little bit. Uh, she nods to you and then she continues. Uh, you were uh, right, Harish. What, 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 what's wrong? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I. I just had. I just had to pray. For yes. I. I. I it f- something feels wrong. Yes. Don't you feel it? Don't you feel that something is? Well. Is off. Well, maybe a little, but um, actually, I prayed myself earlier, and actually, it helped things go well. I felt uh, there was actually a little bit of a, a little, little, little bit of a little fluctuation problem, but I, I actually, uh, before everything, but I, I, I fixed it. Um, I, I actually took that as a good sign from the icons. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. I, I, I've been praying to the Lady of Tears to to bless us and the station, and and uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe we are in pretty good shape, actually. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I think so. I think everything went according to plan, which is what we did. And, and uh, my checks were right. And um, uh, uh, you, but you, you, you just get a bit nervous when it actually happened. I noticed you left quite suddenly, actually. Yeah, yeah yes, yeah. I, I got a reminder of something I, I needed to do. With that. But, but, but it's fine. I mean, yes, yeah, we can... Yeah. Let's we can we can talk more about it when we have our shift later. Yes, of course. I I don't want to pry too much anymore. Um, I you know, Harish can be a bit stern, but at least she's from here, which is always nice. Mm. I like these Zalevians, I think to myself. The day passes, and you all kind of do your shifts. You monitor the situation throughout the day. You all kind of calm down. There is some, still some anxiety, but pretty, in pretty good shape. Um, you even start celebrating a bit. Even though that might be not be Alan's cup of tea, but Jorug and, the, and the, I think Leila, you're probably kind of in for some celebration, as well as actually Faisal. And um, even Harish joins into that a little bit. So people, you know, share a little bit. There are, is a little bit more of a friendly banter going on, and, uh, and kind of nice talks between the crew and mm. all of that. There's, there's been a lot of stress going on. Yeah, mm. I mean, you know, I'm not completely um, celebratory. Everything seems fine. I just have a little my uh, my tools nearby, just to run some checks while I'm maybe not at the station itself. But you know, I'll have the ambience. So. Later that evening, I think it's you too, Leila and Alam, that actually have a shift together and watching the, the readouts at the lab. Mm. So you both had some time during previous shifts to kind of sleep and eat and uh, things like that. And you're sitting there staring out into the deep cold space. You're seeing the, the kind of nasty uh, yellow uh, surface of uh, Sini uh, below you. And um, that initial calm, you actually, you, I mean, you've been staring at this planet for quite some time, and you've also both been traveling to its surface quite a few times. So you notice pretty much at the same time that there is a lot of kind of um, density of clouds going on. In some of the quadrants that you've placed the installations in, you can actually see uh, lightning storms and, 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 uh, and uh, yeah, uh, electric discharges starting to to occur on the surface. Is that uh, normal? Like there's normally storms, right? You have weather stations placed. Kind of the, those were the ones that picked up on the pattern in the first place. So yeah, you have you have these uh, weather stations. Uh, Kind of logging the, the the weather on scene, and you have data from years. Uh, uh, it seems, but when you start looking through the the, the numbers, um, yeah, the atmosphere definitely is in a turmoil. I mean, it's it's a massive storm, you know, starting to build up. You have um, indications of electromagnetic discharges uh, in the clouds, and um, uh, I mean, you've done simulations, so. 
I mean, everything should be fine. And you've done the simulations based on you know years of data, so yeah, you know, you've been and Cena has been through some bad storms. So so yes. you've run all of those. You like run the worst case scenarios. It's all fine. But once you start looking at the numbers now, you, you, you realize that it's the the values are quite close to kind of the outliers. The, yes. The really bad ones in uh, historically in this place. It's a pretty strong storm. Yes. Um, I suppose that's not very good luck, but uh, the simulations have it handled. Um, I'm sure we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not over the. I mean, it's not over the the limits. I mean, it's a little. Well, it's, it's not really over. It's like it's still under. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just a little, isn't it? Just a little. I mean, it's, it's a little close. Yeah, but it's still under. Yeah, I know, but I was just saying. No, yeah. Leela, I was just, just saying, I, I know, and I just sort of shake my head. Our conversations always seem to go out in circles. <laughs> and I look at it and I uh, feel my hands shaking a bit. Well, we're not supposed to report anything yet, right? I mean, it's still, still, under, the, still under the values. Yes, yes. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm sure about it again. Just, you know, my... Uh, I suppose you already do the stars It's like I've seen this planet so many times now. I've seen these things before. Mm -hmm. But it's you know something just feels different. It's like because we've mm, it's still a sort of relief, isn't it? I mean that we're actually it's getting done now. Yes. Y yes, that's good. I won't miss this view. Actually, I don't think it's that nice. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think uh, what we've done could sort of affect the the actual climate on the planet? Maybe. I'm not really sure. It's not my field. I make sure everything works. Not like they ask me what actually is going to happen. God forbid the consortium asks for someone's opinion on something. You um, you keep kind of talking about this for for some time, and then the shift uh, routine change and and. Um, Yorog and um, Harish uh, goes on instead. You're both allowed, you know, back to the crew quarters mm. to kind of rest up. Um, Yorog, when he comes into the room, he asks, "Have you uh, anything interesting happened, or uh, is it just the same? Well, all according to plan, eh?" Yes, <laughs> I mean a few storm actually. Say, it's it's a pretty storm. good storm down there. The values are like on the limit, but they're still under it. So. Oh, but they're still under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but then so we should fine. be fine. I mean, we've done the simulations thousands of times. You know, mm. we, we shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And Rish also kind of walks in and and she you know sits down in one of the chairs and it's like mm, she looks a little bit more worried than he does, but you know, yeah. And they they both yeah uh, sit and watch the yellow giant outside of the window. You both. Uh, take a well-deserved rest. Yeah. Mm. And I sit for a bit in my own chamber. I feel a stash that I've hidden under the pillow. I just feel it. I'm a bit shaky, but I don't think I need it now. Still have sort of a comfort that I know that I have it there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, like, hmm? If I really need it. Yeah, I actually have a moment to myself. I actually take off sort of my shawl because I often wear almost like a hooded shawl mm. on my head mm. at most times. It you know it just makes me feel comfortable. But I take it off for a minute. I you know comb my hair a little. So after your shift, you both go to the crew quarters. You go to bed. You can get out of. Uh, you finally get to relax properly. I mean, you're, you're not going uh, on again until um, early next morning, so you you cannot leave. It isn't quite that easy to fall asleep. There, the, the, you have this nagging sensation still, right? You, you feel like there is something calling upon you, and, and uh, it almost feels like the faceless the icon that no one really talks about or mentions. Or, you know, it feels like there is this this blind spot almost in your mind where it feels like the, the faceless is, is looking down upon you. You're not quite sure where where that is. 
why that is. So you feel quite uh, anxious and, and, and horrible about that. But you drift into sleep, you fall asleep, and um, suddenly wake up. There is shouting going on in the crew quarters. You hear Faisal, essentially like the door opens up and she shouts into the crew quarters. Everyone, get to the lab, now, quickly. What's going on? The readouts, they're, they're all wrong. They're, they're all wrong. Come on, uh, Alam, we need you. I... Come on. And uh, yeah, uh, Leila, you, you too, Every, everyone. For uh, sake. I stumbled to quickly clothe, you know, re get my um, clothing back on and just sort of get out and get out there, back to the lab. Yeah, and I ugh, just stopped tussling with my things. Oh no, I forgot that. Oh, get back and get something and then I get myself over. You, you all kind of move into the lab area and there you see Harish and Yorug and they're like truly frightened. Harish, she's trying to explain something to Faisal probably and, and, and as you enter she just kind of reiterates on it and like uh okay so it was half an hour ago i guess the, 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 the quadrant three is da down uh, and then she's you alam and she's, quadrant three it's 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 down i i don't we we got some of the warning messages but there there is there's there's problems with it and, and, and the storm still going uh y yes and it's it's beyond what we measured before, I, I mean, ever measured before. Uh, but we tried to do an emergency reboot. It's, it seems like the software is down, but uh, it, it doesn't want to go online again. We don't get any I, values. I think back to myself, is Quadrant 3 the one that had a problem earlier? Yes. Maybe it was. I mean, I'm as, to sort of Could it have been your fault? Mm. Should you have checked? I did check. I did check. I, I, I just, I don't say anything. I just go straight over to the system and I start running diagnostics and just trying to, like, um, make this, find out what's going on. What's going on? I mean, it should restart. That's the thing. Like, in, in all of these systems, you're like, you built, like, you and Yoru, you, 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 you put this thing together. I mean, they, they should reboot themselves. There is actually a little AI, there is, uh, you know, in the installations that, that should be quite capable of, of, of restarting these things. You're also seeing, as you are looking at the Quadrant 3 specific data, the rest of you uh, are essentially looking at the screens, uh, readouts, and you all see that there seems to be some kind of bad connection, there's packet loss being indicated, uh, the, the patterns are kind of lost uh, for a couple of seconds, returns getting lost again. And you see the weather station data, and, and uh, Harish has actually brought that up on a separate screen. And you can see, like, there, this is beyond any simulation we've ever done. It's, it's just horrible storms down there. Mm. It's a hurricane, and, a, and a, you know, weather system has kind of moved into uh, several of the quadrants by now. Oh shit, does this mean we are failed? Is this thing failed? We we haven't failed. Faisal looks up. We we have to fix it. We have to make sure that this works. Oh, well, it's not going down on the surface with this storm going on, are we? We we might have to, but I mean, you should all be. When she looks at Yorug and Alan, like you should be able to restart this, right? Yes, yes, of course. I, I mean, can restart we, this, and I we just... could boost the the we, we could boost the signal. Hmm. Right? Yes, like, y y I go to Yorug. Yorug, help me boost the signal. We'll let, we need to get the signal out, let me do some calibrations, and it should restart. Uh, it might, it, it, it's probably not restarting because of the interference from the storm. It's beyond our, our previous, what we thought it would be, right? So therefore, we just need to boost it a little. I can do that. It's easy. It's easy. So that's a little data gin role, and um, yeah, it could be assisted by technology or science, I think. So maybe just because you and Yorug were specifically called out here, it's probably you two that will try to fix this. Right, so I'll take my five dice, my two dice, for data gin, and yes. then... and then you can get another green from Yorug, who's trying to desperately to help you. Oh, yes, and I sort of just take a deep breath, and I just start again really trying to fix this problem. 
Ah, one, you say? Yes. Yes. Yorim seems not that stressed when you start looking at this. He's, he's, he's calmer than he was before, actually. Uh, but he's still, you know, anxious and there's a lot of things going on. You're trying to um, get to a point where you can reboot Quadrant 3. And you get it back, mm. briefly. There's like this flicker of a moment where you actually get a signal back, which indicates that all of these warning messages and, and all of that stuff, that's not the fall, right? Uh, that it's a pure software thing, but there is, seems to be something wrong with the software. There seems to be a miscalculation, or there is, there, it's stuck in some kind of loop or something. There is something, there, there is a problem with the, with the software. And when you realize that, that's when you once again kind of feel that shiver and, and there is almost, you, you, you both sense a kind of, a, a, almost like a dark presence or like a shadow kind of sweeping across the station. There's just this thought of the void kind of working its way into your brains. I was just about to blurt something out about trusted to a first come and a traveler or a nomad to, and then I just get cut off. Yeah, so you're, you're like starting that sentence a little bit, like a few words kind of start blurting out, and then... That's when Quadrant 2 suddenly also just... Starts getting... You're getting uh, error messages being thrown out it. Oh, by the icon. You see a massive readout of electromagnetic discharge in that, like, the weather station that's uh, close to that uh, installation massive and the weather station is lost immediately uh, the installation kind of flickers for a bit and you see system logs start mapping out faults kind of error messages and you just see at a glimpse you, you you see the log kind of just floating by and you just see hardware failures you see it's like circuit boards being fried there's like <laughs> and shortly thereafter the entire quadrants, all the readouts, everything from that quadrant goes completely offline. It just <laughs> flatlines. I just sort of stare at the screen. I idly am pressing a few buttons to <laughs> bring up some readings, but I just, I know that it's, that's gone. It's gone. It's yeah. Totally you gone. start thinking about, like, what do I have in the workshop? I have. Yeah, what spare parts do I have in the workshop, essentially? You know, you start kind of looking through it, like, yeah, we have mm. kind of emergency package, we can probably, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. But a little part of me is just wondering, is that enough? Because those readings, I'm wondering if the entire, I'm thinking, if the entire thing's gone, you can't, there's months of work. Mm. About a really stressful minute later, you see the remaining two quadrants and the weather station data start Kind of, you get more and more noise into the system. You see, you see cutouts, packet loss, all of that things happening again. You know, more and more, higher, higher frequency, longer and longer periods of time. It's, it's completely dropped, and then suddenly, it just doesn't return. Like all the readouts, it's just blocked out by the storm. Nothing gets through from the sensor arrays. Maybe it'll come back after the storm settles. Anyone? We can't wait for that. Faisal stands up from, uh, from the chairs you're sitting in. We can't wait for that. I mean, Jeroma said there can be no excuses. Well, it's not an excuse, Pascal. I think the simulations, obviously, no, the simulations weren't wrong. Obviously, the data is was incorrect. Obviously, this is a new phenomena or something, and it's just now we'll have to reset the experiment uh, you, you know we, we, we started uh, if we hadn't started today actually maybe maybe we would have missed this no excuses we've been working on this for many segments I've been here for almost a cycle I we should have we should have detected this we should have caught this hmm. we have to fix this the Roma will know about this within the hour and if we have if we don't have a plan that's our heads 
all of us. So she kind of looks at everyone in the room. I find a pen and I start twirling it nervously. Um, so what can we do? I mean, what can we do? Leila, ready the shuttle. Honestly? Ready the shuttle. Ah. Alam, bring all the spare parts you have. Jorug, all the equipment. Yes, we have to go down there. You have listened to a special episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we play the adventure A Song for Jeruma for Coriolis. A Song for Jeruma was designed by Rika Nantroya, who also was our game master in this episode. Coriolis is published by Free League. The music was created by Alpha Zone and Sabled Sun, and used with permission from their label, Cryo Chamber. We also use the official Coriolis soundtrack by Stars on a Black Sea. Massive thanks to Sirenscape for allowing us to use their amazing atmosphere and sound effects. Make sure you check them out at www.sirenscape.com. And as always, a big thank you to all supporters. If you enjoy the show and want to encourage our work, head over to Patreon and see if you want to support the show there. We hope you enjoyed this special episode and look forward to meeting again. Thank you for listening.